I am back. I am here. I am in the studio live. Feel free to call in. Justin Lee Peterson is here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I I, I believe Fox News is reporting that uh, in Turkey. I think. I'm sorry about the city, but I believe. I mean the uh, exact location. But I believe it was Turkey. A suicide bomber tried to kill folks today. Put a bomb on himself, but on, uh, and and thankfully only two people were killed. So uh, I'll bring that to you as I read more about it. These suicide bombers are serious. I don't know why. I just cannot understand why the uh, Democrats of the United States of America cannot understand that. This is not a game. These folks are out to destroy Christians and Jews. They want to control. And I don't care what they say. The reality is what it is. We have to face reality. Yes, yeah, in Turkey. A massive blast in Turkey today. Uh, but they're reporting that only two people were killed at this point. A suicide bomber put a bomb on, on himself and went on a bus there. And uh, isn't that amazing? They are willing to die for what they believe in. Willing to kill themselves. But for what they believe in. And the American people today just don't have the will to stand up and uh, and uh, fight back. Just don't have it. I think the American people are just fat and sassy and sinful. Sinful. And as a result, they don't have the will to stand. And they listen to the brainwashing of the liberal socialist Democrats around the country. You better wake up, America. Uh, other good news. The... Um, the Senate did not vote on the amnesty bill. You know, they were supposed to vote on it yesterday. They did not do it. They put it off until after Memorial Day. I wonder why. I wonder did it have anything to do with the uh, outrage of the American people. The American people jumped on this. They did not want and do not want an amnesty bill. They jumped on it. This bill was supposed, was set to, to uh pat to vote on to be voted on and pass on Monday, but it is now on hold until after Memorial Day. And what they're going to do, folks? They're going to go into their communities for the for this holiday, and they're going to get a feel of what you're feeling and thinking even more so. Let them know you do not support amnesty. They're not going to enforce any laws. This is just another way of allowing the illegals to come in and hope that they will vote for the Democrats. And they will because they're going to depend on the government to take care of them. Uh, and if you depend on the government, you, you, you end up, most of the time you end up going along with the Democrats because the Democrats believe that you are not capable of doing it for yourself, that they can do it better for you. So the amnesty bill, uh, the vote on the amnesty bill has been put off until after Memorial Day weekend there. So good news. And if you get out there, you let them know how you feel. You call them, email them, fax them, uh, 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 let them know if they vote for an amnesty bill, you're going to vote them out. Just let them know that. Be right up front about it. Don't be mean and nasty, but just let them know if they support amnesty, you're not going to support them. 800, no, not 800, 888, toll free number, 888 Jesse, 888 Jesse. No I in the Jesse. It's 888 I was talking to my staff this morning about time. It seemed as though time uh, doesn't exist. I know I, I look at the clock and I see the clock moving, you know, forward. I see uh, the sun comes up and go down. But there's a, another uh, just above what we perceive as time, 
It's a timeless time, it seems. Now, I could be tripping, but it seems as though there is a timeless time. And I was experiencing this last night. Am I off, Billy? Billy is the spiritual one here. Am I off about that? There is there is no such thing as a timeless time. Yeah? I don't know. You, you think that's possible? It looked like there is something else besides the time that we are all uh, uh, physically connected to. And that's not a good time. That time wears you down, but if you let that time have its way, let it move on, and you get into that timeless time, that still time, there's another reality. I may be tripping, but I was thinking this last night. (laughs) Maybe somebody out there can help me on that. Uh, it, It looked like I am just getting up, going to bed, getting up, going to bed. And I think there is a time that is ahead of me, but also there's a time that is with me. That makes sense? No? Okay. Bill said that makes sense. Billy is the engineer. He's very smart spiritually. So (laughs) I was just thinking about this last night. I I don't know. I'm going to read the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about time. And... um. And ask some of the Bible experts about time. I'm going to have to look into this. Because there's something else going on. That I don't think we. I don't think we tend to tap into. The funeral services for. Reverend Jerry Falwell. Is uh, today at Thomas Road Baptist Church. And. Hundreds. And maybe thousands mourner, of mourners. Uh. uh uh, uh, are at the funeral to say goodbye to him. Uh, it's pretty sad when I think of Jerry Farwell. We have lost a great man. America has lost a great man. Eight 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 seven seven. Jesse is the number. Eight 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 seven seven. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. Uh, and I appreciate it. I absolutely appreciate it. My guest for you this morning and for me. Is the uh, Reverend Dr. Samuel McKinney. He's a pastor of Mount Zion, Zion um, Baptist Church out of Seattle, Washington. And what is uh, significant about uh, the Reverend, not j- just uh, being a pastor, but he was also the lieutenant for Dr. Martin Luther King in the uh, uh, Pacific Northwest area so he 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 knew dr martin luther king he worked with him and uh he was also is also the founding one of the founding members of the seattle civil rights commission and uh um reverend mckinney thank you so much for coming on i appreciate it thank you what uh is the uh seattle's civil rights commission what is that? Well, uh, I'm not on a civil rights commission. We uh, had a, a civil rights committee that spearheaded um, a lot of the action that we took in the 60s. Okay. Again, uh, just do, I guess we had two uh, points of focus. Can you speak up just a little bit for me? Yes. Okay. Uh, we had two points of focus. One point was to uh, support what was being done in other parts of the country, especially in the South, and supported Dr. King in those movements. And uh, the other part was to make sure that we had justice here in the Pacific Northwest, because every part of this nation has been affected by uh, slavery and the residual effects of it. So uh, prejudice, bigotry, racism, discrimination, though not as overt as in other places, was very much alive and well, and to some degree still is. Did you grow up in Seattle area? No, I did not. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, okay. All right. And um, is there, um, 
Is racism holy black back today? Is is it holy black? Yes. Well, um, we have a, a kind of a rainbow in a sense out here. We have uh, Asians of all types from the continent and uh, Latinos, people, various pe- people of various uh, races who speak Spanish. And uh, they have they are now outnumbering us because their access to this part of the world is not easy. They're coming in from Asia. They're coming up from uh, Mexico and South America. Uh, but racism is still alive, and it is still, in a sense, directed toward blacks. So we, is it coming from the Asians toward blacks? or No, no it's still based. Uh, there, there's some. Because the way the man plays, you know, he... Uh, the clown at the circus throws out the candy and the kids run over each other trying to grab it. Yes. Uh, so people end up fighting among themselves for a few crumbs. But, and, and when you say the way the man plays it, who, who who is the man? The white man. The white man. So the white man is playing the Asians and in an unconscious They're way. Playing, playing the races against each other. Oh, they are. Where they can and. We have not coalesced as we should. And why not? Uh, good question. Why not? Because uh, people don't trust one another. And also, the thing that helped take Dr. King away. Yes. And I should say that uh, I went to, I'm a graduate of Morehouse College in Atlanta. Dr. King and I were in the, were in the same freshman class. That's a good school. Yes, sir. And uh, I was two years old. He was fi- two years older than Dr. King. He was 15 when he had it. He, I was 17. And when I turned 18, I grabbed me in the tail end of World War II. After service, I went back to school. So Dr. King was 15 when he entered into Morehouse, and you were 17? Yes. Wow. Well, see what happened. Uh, World War II was on. And in the state of Georgia, kids who took a test, and passed it in the 11th grade, could bypass the 12th grade. That kept college enrollments up because each month the military was drafting. Oh, I see. Uh, quite a number. Uh, but as coming back here to the Pacific Northwestern state of Washington, uh, African Americans constitute 4% of the total state population, but close to 40% of everyone who's incarcerated. Did you hear me? Yeah, I do. You so you you are you you are saying that white Americans are still uh, racist toward black folks and trying to keep them down. Uh, a, a lot of people are. Yes. Uh, and can you give me uh, a, a, when I come back from this break, give us examples of white racism toward black Americans today. Let me take a break, and I want you to respond to that when, when I come back. 888-77-JESSE, 888-77-53773. We're going to take a quick break. Dr. Samuel McKinney is my guest. He's a, he was a lieutenant for Dr. Martin Luther King during the Civil Rights Movement. Back in a moment, folks. Welcome back, folks. Jesse Lee Peterson is here. 888-77-JESSE is the number. Oh, I lost the doctor. I lost my guest, Malcolm. I don't know. He may have, he's not there right now. So we you get it back for me. We gotta get the doctor back on the phone. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I, I <laughs> my sinus I apologize for that. My sinus is, is uh bothering me today. Uh in the spring and early summer I tend to go through this stuff. Ever since I've been in been living in California for some reason. And I just snorted on the radio not realize I was even do- doing it, thinking about my guest. Dr. Samuel McKinney is my guest out of Seattle, Washington. He was a lieutenant for Dr. Martin Luther King, and he also helped. He was, uh, according to this report, he was uh, uh, one of the, uh, I guess, founder, it says founding member of the Seattle Civil Rights Commission. So we have him back. I was a founding member of the Human Rights Commission. Oh, Human Rights. Okay. It says... Uh, and its uh, job was to try to 
uh, passed a, uh, a open housing ordinance. Oh, okay. That did not happen until after Dr. King's assassination. On here it says civil rights, but it should be human rights. On your bio we have from Mount it's Zion. Human rights. Uh, doctor, give us examples, a couple, just two or three examples of how the white white people are still discriminating toward blacks and holding well, them let me, down. Let, let, let me see if I can clear that up. It's not as overt as it was in the South, even here, where there were open signs of hostility. Because on the surface, if you come here, you will think you're in heaven. And it is basically a good place. Yeah, You'll see more interracial marriages here than perhaps you'll see anywhere else in the country. Right. Black, white, Asian, I mean, it's a mixture of folks. We have the executive of the um, King County uh, is an African-American. We have representatives on the King County board. Uh, we have a King, uh, uh, Seattle City Council person. The new school superintendent is African American. So how how uh, how are blacks being held back because of racism? Due to racism? Well, sometimes uh, it's a new day. The paradigm shifts are occurring. Um, we. Uh, and let me throw this in. We've changed the name of King County. It was named for Rufus Devane King, who was a, a vice president under Franklin Pierce, who was an Alabama slaveholder. And we've renamed the county, and it was voted Martin Luther King Jr. County. So that's the mark of progress. We're doing a lot of things. But um, I think Harriet Tubman said that she freed over close to 600 people from slavery. She could have doubled that number if the folks had realized that they were slaves. So, Dr. Because of Time, give me... There is a um, culture that you can only get so far, and uh, it's, the, it's the matter of being constantly vigilant at all times. And many of our people, African Americans, feel that they've already arrived. One of the things we are struggling with right now is to how to be a community if you don't have a neighborhood, because gentrification has got us scattered all around now. So gentrification is one example of how the white man is is uh, dem- uh, 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 trying to keep the black man down. I'm not saying he's trying to keep him down. Or discriminating he, against blacks. Well, he's he's uh, he's taking over. We we still have problems getting good loans through banks. But uh, that is because uh, black, not all blacks, of course, but blacks tend to have bad credit, or they have no collateral. Uh, yes, but uh, there's some whites who show up for the same thing, and they make a way for them. How do you know that? Oh, there have been some tests. I would talk to the Urban League about uh, how that thing is happening out because I don't claim to be an expert on these. Uh, right. All these areas. I have all the facts and statistics. But I've noticed that banks today, once they check your credit and find out that you have excellent credit, they have no problem. They beg you to take their money nowadays. They seem to want to give it to you if your credit is good. And, yeah. and blacks tend not to pay back. They and so they, you know, the banks are not going to just give you the money just because you're black. Why? Well, I know, and nobody's asking for that. But why don't blacks deal with the bad credit issue? Uh, because we've been caught up, unfortunately, the places where we could get money. These, uh, and I think the NAACP has had a uh, campaign against these neighborhood quick loan places. Yes. A lot of these places where it's a dollar down and a dollar forever, right? And you never get out of the, never get out of debt, and getting good credit is difficult for a lot of people. Who is to blame that blacks would go to those places, and and, and who is to blame for that? The businesses or the blacks who go there? Well, many of the people who've gone there have been frustrated. They went into banking, couldn't get it. 
And these people gave it to you, but you had to give an arm and a leg when you did. And they didn't realize it. It might have been short-sighted on their part. And so in our church, we started a credit union. But I came here over 40 years ago, which has six million in assets, to give people the dignity of having their own credit union, and having their own, or having the uh, dignity of having a good credit rating. Give me another example of white racism toward blacks. One more. Eight 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 seven seven Jesse, Reverend yeah. McKinney is my guest. Yes, we 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 still have to. Uh, we still have to prove ourselves. I mean, people are very subtle now. I mean, it's not as open and blatant as it once was. And I know that the banks, and I've discovered this, that when you can make it on your own without them, here they come offering you everything. Of course. So I've tried to teach people. Don't worry about the man. Get your own thing. And when you get your own thing and you don't need his thing, then here he comes. He's willing to open up his doors and help you, but we got to get our own thing. But that's how life is anyway. I noticed that in life, if you're willing to help yourself, folks want to help you. But if you're unwilling to do for yourself, after a while, nobody want to be bothered with you, whether yeah. you're black or white. Yeah. That just seemed to be a rule of law. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah, that's why we try to help people to help them. So that's not racism. It's just nobody want to be bothered with a trifling person. Yeah, but it so happens that when you see a lot of people who you assume are trifling, and that's, and that's the problem right there, it is assumed. And that's where the Racism comes in. When you assume, after you try to work with someone, when you assume that they no, won't no, do when, it? When people assume, for instance, uh, the tallest building in town here is the Columbia Tower, 76 stories high. The There's an express elevator that goes up the first 40 floors. I got on there one day. I was dressed in uh, a shirt and tie suit. And there were six white women on there. And I stepped right into the middle and automatically they put their purses on the opposite side from where I was. I started to ignore it, but I couldn't. You said something to them? Yes, I did. What did you say? I said, I told them what they had done. And I said, look, how can I steal your purse in this elevator? We're all locked in here. <laughs> and look at me. I'm not a young man. I can't run anywhere. How old are you, doctor? I'm 80. 80, okay. And I said, I wasn't 80 then, though. Right. But I said, and furthermore, you don't have anything I need or want. What was their response to you? Hmm. Then a couple of them, and I, I identified myself, told them who I was. A couple of them did come to church with their husbands and identified themselves to me. But, I mean, that's, that's automatically that putting their purses on the opposite side. I mean, there's a lot of subtle stuff here. And that's another example of white racism toward blacks. Let me, uh, I'm, I, I want to throw out my theory about that. And you tell me if I'm wrong about it. All right. I, I think the reason that white Americans, especially females, uh, when they see a black man coming, they tend to protect their purse, purses is because um, young black men are known to go out and snatch, uh, uh, especially white women, but not only white women purses and the black community have allowed it to happen. We have not denounced it. We have not dealt with young black boys, not all of them, but for doing that kind of stuff. And so it is known now. And I even heard, you know, I've do a lot of work with young black men. I've heard young black men brag about doing that. They think white women deserve to have their purses snatched. And so because we have not dealt with it, the good uh, have to suffer with the bad. Yeah, well, we, we Is that to. true or not? Uh, I, I can't bind it all. I, I know that there may be an element. Is there an element of that? That, that can, that thinks that way. Is there an element of that, doctor? 
that could be. I mean, yes or no to that. Is there an element? I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, and uh, I need to know a little bit more about you, who I'm talking to, uh, because you know more about me than I know about you, and therefore I don't give a yes or no. But, I, I mean, know. yes or no, even if you didn't know me, it, no, it, it's I'm just a truth, is, either yes or no. There is some truth into it. I'm not saying that's the whole truth. There is truth in it. Now, having said that, some of us are working with young black men here to help them find a better way and to get this concept of thugocracy out of their mind. Right. To feel that the only place for black men is ultimately in the jail. Where some instances are three generations. So I, I want to just quickly go back, and I, that is what we need to do, definitely help these guys to overcome it since their fathers are not doing it. But I want to go back. So when these white women are holding their purses when they see the black man coming, uh, is it possible that it's not because of racism, but because of the reputation of black men that's been put out there by well, many and, other and, black and, men? And it's based on racism. If I saw them do that with uh, whites, it'd be different. I was out in a big, one of the big malls over here in Bellevue Square, and I saw about eight white fellows, all in black uh, sweatsuits, baseball caps turned around, uh, walking like, uh, I think, the swag of the see a lot of black men. Uh, nobody seemed to pay them too much attention. But had they been black, every store detective, every policeman would have been alerted and on their trail, watching them every step of the way. Let me take a quick break, Dr. Reverend Dr. Samuel McKinney is my guest, pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church out of Seattle, Washington, 888-77-JESSE. The lines are open if you'd like to jump in there. We're going to take a break and come back with the doctor and move forward with this subject. So many things I want to talk to him about. Back in a moment. Welcome back to the show. Jesse Lee Peterson is here. Dr. Reverend Samuel McKinney is my guest out of Seattle, Washington, Mount, Z- Mount Zion Baptist Church. He also was a lieutenant for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a man that I thank God for, highly respect. And it's an honor to be talking with the doctor right now. Uh, especially he's 80 years old. He, he, you know, he, he's seen this country go through a lot. And so it's really an honor. It's an honor, doctor, to have you on today. Well, I'm honored to be asked. And I, I appreciate it. Um, I, I want to move forward with the uh, illegal immigration issue. Then we want to move on and talk about other issues that are going on in our in the black communities. Uh, what's your view of feeling about illegal aliens in this country? What should happen? Well, um, I see them in this community. I, I don't know if they're illegal or not, but I see a lot of people from, well, I'm told from south of the border, they're doing jobs that a lot of people here won't do. That have that needs to be done, I guess. And why won't they do them? They're low paying, right? Uh, and uh, they're le- not union jobs, many of them. And I'm surprised to see them in places where, uh, like in Memphis, Tennessee, which is the northern capital of the state of, Miss- of Mississippi. Yeah, and seeing in the hotels there where sisters have been doing the jobs in the hotels. Now, uh, uh, immigrants from other countries. You know, Doctor, I went back home recently down in Alabama. Mm-hmm. It's right outside of Montgomery, near a little town called Eufaula, Alabama. I'm familiar. And I saw them there, and I was shocked. I'm like, how did they even hear? I don't know if Eufaula is even on the map, to be honest. I think it I've is. Heard of it. Uh, my mother was from <laughs> Alabama. Oh, yeah? And I was surprised to see them down there. They're everywhere. Yeah. My father was from Gainesville, Georgia. And uh, his father was a, uh, they might call him tenant farmers, but a sharecropper. Yes. And where they used to pick cotton, they're now raising chickens. Yes. For the New York market. And there's a large immigration population in there are working those uh, chicken farms. So maybe maybe the employers are going somewhere to the borders or to a pickup they don't, they don't, center. They don't, they don't have to. 
But how how are these people, these uh, illegals, finding out about little areas like, small areas like that? Somebody goes just like when our folks came north. One came north, got a job, sent back, sent the word back, sent money back. A lot of people are coming and sending money back, back home. What should be done about the illegal aliens? Illegal because uh, all of us. Christopher Columbus coming here, taking over this country, of this land. So the Native Americans, uh, he didn't buy it. Reverend McKinney, what should be done about the illegal? Should they stay? Should we send them back? Should we close the borders? How should, uh, you know, the president is trying to pass an amnesty bill right now. What should happen uh, concerning the illegal aliens? Basically, they have as much right in this country as anybody else. But how do they have rights? They come here illegally. Uh, who who came here legally? But we're talking about them. We. I mean, uh, well, we. But I guess re- slavery re- was legal. Right, it was legal at the time. And, and this land was stolen from the Native Americans. But I so I think it, this is a a hypocritical ear, uh, issue in a sense. So, because I, I of a past history, are you saying that we should? allow the illegals to come in and just take over like this? I'm not saying they're taking over. Should we allow them to come in through the uh, back door like this, as they are? They, they, and they're being brought in, many of them. I know, uh, but the borders are open and they're walking across the borders. Should we allow that? Yeah, there are a lot of folks get here. I mean, I'm not defending them, but I'm saying everybody in this country, if you trace it back far enough, is illegal. The only legal people in this country, the Native Americans. Well, that's not the case, uh, uh, Reverend. If we were born here, or if people have come here through the front uh, door, they earn that. citizenship. Uh, we have citizenship here. They're, le- they're legal. Yeah. But should we leave the borders open so that they can just come in? The border should be controlled. Should it be shut down? I'm not saying that because they're building a wall there just as uh, a wall was built in in uh, Germany, but uh, walls do not make for good good neighbors. So we should not put uh, uh, walls at the borders? I don't think so. You don't think so? Should we deport illegals? I think there should be a process by which people can come legally. Through the, there he is, through the front door. Yeah, and I think that that should be exercised. And shut down the back door, right? I'm not, uh, you put words in my mouth. I'm asking. Uh, I mean, uh, I haven't given that the thought to speak authoritatively on it that maybe others have. Should there be an amnesty bill? I have to check that out. I'm not, I'm not as conversant on that as I need to be. Uh, Reverend, a lot of illegals are coming here, over 12 million now, and it could yeah. be more. Many of them are ended up in the black communities around the country. Right. And as a result of that, uh, they're taking jobs away from blacks. They're overcrowding the public school system. Uh, many of these illegals hate black people because, especially in Mexico, uh, black people are second-class citizens, so they have a negative impression of blacks. In the Los Angeles area, uh, and, and they are killing innocent blacks in South Central L.A. They're forming gangs and going after, you know, other black gangs, but they're killing innocent blacks. There's a lot of hostility uh, between the Mexicans, or especially illegal ones, and the citizens of this country. What should be done about that, and how should we solve that if we don't shut down the borders and deport illegals? There are, are people I read about, folks trying to get into here from Haiti and get turned around. Can you respond to that first for me? What should we do about what's happening in the black community, especially being a civil rights leader with Dr. King? Yes, I, 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 your your opinion is important. How yes, should blacks deal with I what feel, should be what should happen with the illegals? I feel that people in our community and in the Mexican American or the Latino community or Chicano community need to sit down and talk. About what? How to get along one with the other. But blacks are not going to get along with illegals coming in and taking over their I don't communities. Know if they're the enemy or not? But we we have we are not communicating. And I tell you this: the moment we start communicating one with the other, the 
and the man at the top is going to be uneasy. You know what? At the time Dr. King was killed, what was he doing? He diverted from this uh, march on Washington, the uh, Poor People's Campaign, to go to go to Memphis. But that effort was to try to get the poor people of this country, red, black, green, polka dot, whatever color, whatever ethnicity, whatever faith, together. And that was a threat to those in power. And if you want to resolve problems in this country, the people at the bottom need to get together. And when that happens, the top will move. You know, Doctor, a lot of, uh, it appears that a lot of black representatives believe somehow or another that if they get along with these, these illegals coming in, that they're going to vote for them, they're going to unite together, it's not going to happen. That's an illusion. Uh, these folks don't like black. They, they look down on black America. They don't even like America in the way that it is. That's why they're trying to change it, turn it into Mexico. And so this idea that blacks need to sit down with illegals. Well, I don't know if they're trying to turn it into, America, into Mexico because they're coming in because the money is here. Right, but this idea that they're going to unite together with blacks is not going to, that's an I illusion. Said, I didn't say, I said we need to communicate. But why not shut the borders done. down and protect the black citizens first? Well, that's your agenda, go, go forward with it. But what's wrong with that, doctor? I told you that I had not given it the kind of thought. Maybe I'm close up here to the Canadian border and not in Southern California where it is all that we see people up here from, uh, Mexico, we see people coming across right. the Canadian border from uh, Asia. Um, well, I have to tell you, 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 you may not know, but blacks are, it's a, uh, a leave in South Central L.A. And some of them are moving west in Los Angeles. Some are moving back to the south yeah, because it's a warfare going on over there in South Central L.A. between the blacks and the Hispanic. These folks hate black people. Uh, I, I, did not, I did not deny that. One minute. But you can't sit down and, and make peace with your enemy when they hate you like that. It's like trying to make peace with Bin Laden. Well, you, you need to know who the enemy, the enemy is. And we also know that a lot of white people are leaving California. That's right. And, and moving up here. Right. Because it appears that the Northwest will be white longer than other parts of this country. You think that's why? They, I think they're leaving L.A. because uh, it's, right it is, California. it's become, uh, California because California is becoming so liberal. Well, I don't know about all. It's a mess down here, Doctor. You need to pay it a visit. It's worse than you can um, imagine. Well, what do you mean by liberal? Uh, anything goes. Homosexuality is fine. Social programs up to yang yang. High taxes. Uh, now tell me something. About, you've been talking to me. That I don't know a thing about you. I am uh, uh, I am black. I'm as black as the ace of space. All right. I'm from the south. I grew up on a plantation in Alabama. Uh huh. I run a nonprofit organization uh, where we are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. We're helping black men, you know, overcome anger. Encouraging them to get married before having children out of wedlock. Okay. To you know, to work and take care of themselves, less government as possible. Uh, stop hating the white man and just move on with life. Become an American. How that sound? Well, I'm already American. I don't have to become. I know, but a lot of blacks act, act as though they're not. That's why they call themselves African American. Well, I am an African American. I'm not ashamed of my. Were you born here? I was born in Flint, Michigan. So you're an American. Yes. Right, not African. No, no. That's I claim that myself. And why do yeah, you I claim that? Who I am. Why do you claim that? That's not reality. It is reality. But if you're born in America, sir, you're an American. Yes. Yes. Doctor, I, I want to move on. There is a state of emergency in the black community, and um, it, it uh, uh, of all the new HIV cases, according to the CDC, thirty uh, over fifty percent of them are found within the black community. Black on black crime out of control. Uh, black on black crime out of control. 
out of wedlock birth is at 70% now, according to the uh, uh, Census Bureau. It, there's a war going on between black men and, and black women. When I come back from this break, I want you to tell us and my audience, me and my audience, how, what should we do about this and what are you doing uh, to help change the situation? The lack of values within the black community. 888-77-JESSE. 888-77-53773. We pay for the call. And we will take some calls when I come back. My guest is Reverend Dr. Samuel McKinney. Back in a moment. Okay, we are back. <laughs> Say it again. Welcome back, folks. 888-77-JESSE. We're going to take some calls. Visit my website at bondinfo.org. B-O-N-D-I-N-F-O dot O-R-G. We are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. We work with all people, but our primary focus is on the black man. The Reverend Dr. Samuel Barry McKinney is my guest. This man was a lieutenant with Dr. Martin Luther King. What an honor. He is... uh the pastor of Mount Zion's Baptist Church out of Seattle, Washington. And uh, before we leave the airways in the next few minutes here, we're going to have the Reverend give you his website and phone number. So if you're in the area and you need to visit a church, you can check him out. Uh, Reverend, what should we do about the state of emergency, uh, the lack of moral values, lack of character? 888-77-JESSE, 888- what should we do, sir, about the lack of values, the state of emergency within the black community today? Well, um, we need to reinstate and proclaim values that we, that are our values, that we have had that have helped us to, that have sustained us thus far. We have forsaken a lot of them in trying to be like others, and it is not worth. Uh, I'd like to just follow the line so you know a little bit about me. Uh, you said previously that California was too liberal. Uh, that ran, ran up a red flag with me because... Uh, a little louder for me, Reverend. Huh? Yeah, speak a little louder for me. I said you said that California had become too liberal. Yes. Uh, I am not a conservative. Are you a liberal? Not, huh? Are you a liberal? I'm sorry. What you have to understand is that the word liberal is not bad. It's been trash. If it had not been for a liberal view, we would still be slaves. That's not when true. When I read my Bible. That's not true, Reverend. Yes, uh, slavery ended because Republicans got involved in it. And who were the Republicans then? The Republicans then are different from the Republicans now. Uh, well, everything is different now, but it wasn't liberals who helped to no, fight no, for the freedom. It was liberal, but yeah. it was a philosophy. Yeah. That, I mean, you can't hold, and and, and, and uh, when I say liberal, I'm not talking about a permissive society where everything goes. Right. But if you read your Bible, when Jesus quotes the 61st Psalm when he preached in uh, his home church in Nazareth, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has called me to set at liberty those who are bound, those who are held captive. That's where I'm coming from. Reverend. These, these, these. these do you vote as? Do you vote for the Democratic platform? I vote the way I feel. Do you vote for I Democrats? May vote for some of it, I may not vote for all of it. I may vote for some things that are Republicans espouse, but not all. Did you vote for Bill Clinton? Yes, I did. Twice. Twice. Bill Clinton cheats on his wife. He believes in abortion. And, he support homosexuality. I don't know about he will purge. Uh, I, I know about he purged himself. But he, he, he was impeached. Right now, How report. can you vote for a man like that and be a reverend? Because he's still a child of God and can can be saved. But now, he, uh, but until he's saved, he's not a child of God. Now, you 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 become. We all children of God. Not until and you're born of God. All of us are born of God, but we have to claim it ourselves. No, everybody yeah. created by God, but everybody is not a child of God until they accept God. Well, that's a, is that I true? Don't, I don't know how prepared you are theologically. But don't, mustn't you be that. born again of God in order to be His child? Now, now, Bill, Bill Clinton 
was not perfect, and Gingrich and some of the others who came against him and brought up that issue were not perfect themselves. Do you support abortion? Hmm? Do you support abortion? I support a woman's right to choose. So you support a woman's right to have an abortion? I have a, if that, and she has to give an account to God. Of the now, I'm talking about body. you, Reverend. Do you support a woman's right to have an abortion? I have support a woman's right to make the choice that do you, she wants to make. Do you support same-sex marriage? No, I don't. Do you support uh, uh, abortion uh, even at the ninth month, partial birth abortion? The person who goes into that has to deal with themselves and their government. I understand that, but as now, a if, reverend, if do you su- you support that? Trying to re- legislate what goes on in the bedroom and people out here hungry, they're going to save a fetus or starve a child and execute an adult. Why don't you support same-sex marriage if you support abortion? I don't. It's what? not the same. Why not? It's not the same. Why don't you support same-sex marriage? I don't support it. Why not? Because I don't feel that it's right. What's wrong with home- same-sex marriage? It's not what we intended, what God intended. Did God intend for women to kill their babies in their wombs? Show me where that is. Uh, yeah, that same sex, he speaks about it. You, you're and right. I woman. agree with you. Homosexuality is abnormal, it's wrong. But abortion is wrong likewise. And I need well, a I mean, quick that's, yes that's, or that's no. The main, does God, the main, did God give the a woman, Reverend, conservatives have. does God support? That's the lame same issue that conservatives have. I want to take some calls for you, Reverend. I need a quick answer. Abortion and homosexuality and the world and and those are real issues. But the world is larger than that. Reverend, give me a quick yes or no to this. Does God support a woman killing a baby inside of her womb? That's between them. They're going to have to decide that with God when they stand before. So then how are you making decisions about homosexuality if you won't make it about abortion? They're not the same. They're not the same. Okay. Yeah, abortion is worse than homosexuality. Well, that's uh, your point of view. And you have a right to your point of view. Reverend, let me take some calls for you because I, uh, I am really enjoying talking to you. It's an honor to be with you. Uh, let's take some calls here real fast. I lost who's called. Let's go to line one. Uh, is this Ronald from L.A.? It surely is, Jesse. Okay, you're on the air with Dr. McKinney. Thank you for calling. You're welcome. Dr. McKinney, this question is for both of you. Is I cannot understand why so-called black representatives, and this is very, very, very discouraging to the black community, and black males in particular, they always seem to either evade the questions that are put to them that are crucial for our survival. Not development only, but survival. I mean, in, in, in the majority of the questions that Jesse has asked you this morning, you have either evaded it or avoided it in some manner. And I just want to know why <laughs> this is being done by most of the black representatives, so-called, that come on his show. Well, I'm not aware of his show, that. I didn't know anything about it until I was asked if I would, and I don't know anything about Jesse or this program. I'm but see, not that's trying my to evade anything, but I will. I do not fit easily uh, into any category. Uh, for instance, this thing, are you for? I will never, and I never have performed a same-sex marriage. But what he's asking, Reverend, you have avoided my question or not answered them directly. Well, I mean, uh, he would like to know why is that? Well, I, evidently I didn't want to answer. It. But why? You are a Reverend. You're a Lieutenant for Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, I believe that you care about this country and about black Americans. I do. Why don't you answer the question? Why don't you be honest about the question? Because it's a truth that's going to set us free. Yeah. No, and since you, are a reverend, we are, since you are a reverend, a we expect you to be uh, honest. You, you ask uh, yes or no. I mean, I don't, I don't fit easily into boxes. But yes or no is not a box. And, and let, me just, let me just add this. Reverend, he's not asking you personal questions. Right. That I is the whole point. Personal. If, if it was personal, you wouldn't be on the program in particular. This is a public forum. Yeah, now, I, you I, I didn't know anything about up. it. I got a call yesterday about being on a program from California. But you could have said no. 
I could have. But that's my whole point. You I was do curious. not. Never mind. Why would they ask me? But I don't know anything about this program. He but, knows more about me than I know about him. But, but Reverend, you enough. don't need to, I mean, I told you about me. You know everything yeah. about me now. Yeah. But even if I didn't know about you and you asked me as a Reverend, you asked me questions, I should be able to answer those questions. I don't need to know who you are in order to tell the truth. I have told you the truth. Uh, Ronald, what is it you want to know? Ronald, thanks for your call. I appreciate it. You're welcome, sir. Great call. 888-77-JESSE. Reverend, I think the callers are frustrated because one of the reasons I bring black preachers on and black representatives is because the black community is in a, in a, in a state of emergency right now, and we need some honest dialogue about it. But the black reverends are refusing uh, to be honest, and they are refused to— they won't tell. They won't tell the truth about what's really going on, or they evade the questions. Well, um, I'm not trying to evade. No, I, I'll put it like this: When you talk about abortion, in some cases, yes; in some cases, no. And the person who has the abortion has to decide herself and has to give an account of the deeds done in her body. But as a reverend, also, don't you have a responsibility, unless her life is on the line, don't you have a responsibility to encourage her not to have an abortion? I need also to encourage her to not put herself in a position where that's even a prospect. Do you Right, but do you have a responsibility to encourage her not to have an abortion? I need to know the whole, whole fact. I, I'm not... I don't go along with these folks who go around bombing abortion clinics. Reverend, what, but what's your website, Reverend? We're running out of time. I'm sorry about that. What, how can people get in touch with you or visit your church? The church is located in 19th and East Madison in Seattle, Washington, area code uh, 1634-19th Avenue. Do you have a website or a phone number you'd like to give out? Yeah, the phone number is area code 206 322 Reverend, it's an honor to talk with you today. Thank you for coming on. Dr. Uh, Samuel McKinney, pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church out of Seattle, Washington, a lieutenant, was a lieutenant with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. of the Pacific Northwest. I absolutely appreciate your time with us. Will you come back again? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have you back because there are other issues that we didn't have time to get to, and I definitely want to I want to ask you more about Dr. King. What was it like being with him? What type of person uh, personally you think that he was? So we'll have you back. Thank you for coming on. Okay. God bless you. Right. right now. Okay, folks, we'll wind it down the first hour. We have another hour to go. 888-77-JESSE. 888-77-53773. That was Dr. Reverend, Reverend Dr. Samuel McKinney out of uh, Seattle, Washington, lieutenant with Dr. Martin Luther King. It, it, you know, it, hopefully this show is exposing what's really wrong within the black community. Until we can be honest about what's wrong with black folks, it's not, it's not going to get better, folks. And you see, this is why black Americans need to start thinking for themselves. Your leaders are on the wrong side of truth. And if you're on the wrong side of truth, you're never going to find peace. We're going to take a break and go back. Come back in a minute. Do not touch that dial. 888-77. Jesse is the call-in number. Back in a moment. 